Good. I'm Rick Ritma, your hardworking mortgage guy, and I've been in the mortgage and real estate business for over 34 years. I've helped over 5,200 folks finance their homes. My team and I believe in uh, that there is. We, you can do it. I can do it. <laughs> we believe in custom tailored loans, not the one size fits all approach. I've only said that a thousand times. You think I could say it? We believe there is a best mortgage for you, and we believe we are the team to deliver it. And I'm Ian Arnold, part of Rick's hardworking mortgage team. I've been in the financial industry for over 15 years, helping customers find the best possible financing. I am an expert at rebuilding people's credit and increasing your credit score so you can get the best rates. Uh, my passion is helping you build your overall wealth and uh, help your family get security uh, for a lifetime. And I also want to remind everybody that if you need up-to-date information on mortgages or the Indies real estate market, Go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com or 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. And we are very excited and honored to have Scott Harmeyer here with FC Tucker. He's a real estate agent. Uh, Scott does a phenomenal job, and and you're going to really enjoy his stories. You, you might even want to take notes. Uh, so get prepared. And Scott, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. What is the best way for somebody to contact you if they have any questions on real estate? I'm old fashioned. Text me, call me, m number 765 618 4957. I always answer my phone. I'm not one of those people that let it ring. Just call me. When you said old fashioned, I was a little worried you're going to say fax me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I, I've had a few uh, fax machines come into the office, and I yeah. was like, what is this, right? <laughs> <laughs> I remember when the fax machines were like texts are today. It was like, man, when you got a fax machine, you had, you were special. Yeah. That was that was a big deal. So what did you do before real estate? So, What was your life like? Where'd you grow up? Yeah, sure. No, I was, uh, so I was actually born and raised in Oceanside, California. Oh, wow. So okay. down there in San Diego County. My dad was in the Marine Corps down there for a little bit, and then uh, we kind of moved over to uh, a place called Muncie, Indiana, uh, so a little bit uh, up north from here. Went to high school, Delta High School, went to Ball State, graduated in 2011, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Uh, you know, I I have an accounting degree, did the accounting thing for a little bit, wasn't for me. Um, and then I had a buddy call me, you know what I mean, is, uh, is, hey, have you ever thought about getting into the car business? And I was like, I'm like, no, but uh, he said he should come talk to me. So, you know, showed me, got me into it. And then, uh, funny story, I started in the car business in 2012 at a dealership in Muncie, Indiana, not knowing anything about it, nothing but sales. And then two months later, they went in there and closed the doors up. Oh, no. Yeah, just insane. I'm like, I'm like, well, I'm not doing this. Screw this. I mean, two months in, I already lost my, <laughs> my good cushion job and, and two months in. And then I get a phone call from a, a, a guy in, uh, that runs Ed Martin Automotive Group. He's no longer with him. It's Todd Reiselman. Okay. And he called me. He says, how would you like to come work for a real auto group? And I'm like, yeah, I'm out on the auto business, man. So, But uh, he kept persuading me. And so it gave me, and, uh, he actually gave me two weeks, got me in an apartment set up, moved down there. I was working down there at the Nissan store on Shadeland Avenue for a few years. You know, just took right after it. I mean, I was selling cars. I was selling 20, 30 cars a month, just right out the get gay. And I mean, I just, I loved it. It was an adrenaline, you know what I mean? It just selling. And then eventually they acquired another, uh, another dealership in 2014 on their, another Nissan dealer on 37 asked me to help run it. And then I took over the financial director gig over there and, uh, spend many of my life there doing finance for them. Uh, training finance managers, and then love every bit of it. I mean, all the connections I've made, the friends that I've made in the automotive world. I mean, that's I wouldn't be where I'm at today without you know the automotive business. So, and then ever since then, there was a buddy of mine that was in the same auto group with me. He worked at our Toyota store. And he kept saying, "Come to t come do real estate. Come do real estate." And I'm like, I don't. I'm comfortable with what I'm doing. I like what I do. He he sent me a picture of his paycheck stuff, and it was like come do it. You're going to kill it. You're going to crush it. Right. So finally, September of 21, I quit cold Turkey. I, you know, they did everything they could to get me. It wasn't no hard feelings. And he said, uh, I studied, I passed my exam January. And then, uh, 
went full force April 1st of uh, last year and then been running. I sold 40 transactions in my first year. I mean, just over 7 million uh, in my first year. I think I just finished my rookie year. I'm on pace. I think I'm winning the rookie of the year for 2023. Only 40 homes. Why not 41? I know, right? I mean, dang, I was just... (laughs) I was like, man, why didn't I not do 50? You know I mean, I, I, if I could do one a week, you know what I mean? I was like, I should be pretty good, right? So, but yeah, that's so, I have that sales background mentality. Right. And then that's, you know, I think that's what due to a lot of my success is I know how to sell. I know how to close. I know, I know what it takes to, you know, get it, you know, follow through the process. There's a road to sell, to sell something and you just got to follow it. Right. So we hear a lot of times when people come on here, the first nine months is really a struggle. So what made you so successful to out the gates? So, uh, so I was in, I'm heavy into Zillow. I do a lot. The the guy that mentors me that was in automotive industry says, do these three things, you know, get set up on Zillow, you know, take your contacts that you've gotten over the years in the car business, reach out to them. Uh, and then, you know, and then obviously F. Sid Tucker gives you a few leads here and them and just work those. So over time, I think of my first year, I closed three of my sphere of influences. Believe me, everybody, your sphere of influence are not going to buy from you until probably the next few years. You only get a couple deals out of it. Zillow, I ended up closing about 25 deals on Zillow. Uh, that was a huge part of my success. I closed a lot of Op City beginning. And, uh, and then I have a few referrals from there, just doing a good job for my clients. And now it's, I'm starting to see the after effect, getting more referrals and repeat business from that. So. Cause Zillow's a, from what I understand, that's a, it, it can be very, very beneficial, but it also, you have to be really good. You have to be very good. You, you have to be good at converting leads. Cause I mean, they're just like any leads. I mean, some of them are not going to be any good. Some of them are going to be great. And some of them are going to be like, you just need to follow through. I mean, I close. I just got an offer accepted yesterday on a, a Zillow lead that I've been working six months. Right. Yeah. I mean, you just got to stay in front of them, just have, set them up on searches, follow up. If you're not following up, you're not doing it right. You're not going to get your money's worth out of Zillow. So. Right. Yeah. And isn't that isn't that on everything? That's on everything. Follow yeah, up. Follow up. Right. Pick up the phone and call. I mean, yeah. that's the. I mean, that's what this is a phone business. Yeah. You know, if you're not answering your phone, you're you know you may be missing an opportunity. Yeah. Well, I think I think. Car, the car business is a great place to learn. Uh, both Ian and I came out of the car business also. Yep. So what, what do you feel like, what, what you, what you, what did you bring forward from the car business that really helps you in real estate and, and benefits your, the people you work with? Yeah, sure. I mean, and like I said, in the car business, they, they train you, right? There's no, there's no sales, you know, they don't teach you sales in real estate. Like when you go into car business or even cell phone business or whatever, so there's a road to the sale. I mean, they teach you from all the way from the meet and greet to a test drive, to a trial close, feature benefits, either or questions. They teach you what the right questions to ask and, you know, how to overcome those objections. And over time, you know, but just being into it 15 years, you kind of learn to perfect that over time, right? right? You know what questions to ask, you know, you know, what questions to stay away from, ask yes questions, what's most important to them, you know, is either or does, you know, do you like this? Do you like that? Does, and over time, you kind of learn that. And that's why my success in the real estate is I know those questions to ask. And I'm not afraid to ask somebody to buy a home. I mean, you, you, that's your hardest part of the year. If you're not afraid to ask somebody to buy and spend money, You'll never make it in this business. You got to ask them for the sale. And that's actually helping them. That's yep. everything you talked about. That's I just want to clarify so everybody under, understands. When you're asking, if you understand the questions to ask, you're asking those questions so that you can better help the customer get what they want. Absolutely. And sometimes people just need that little, hey, do you want to go ahead and make an offer on this house? Yeah. That's all they need sometimes. And it's like they were thinking it, but they aren't sure. They just need that, that, you know, so that's, I think that's extremely important for people. Absolutely. We do this every day. They do it once, maybe every five to 10 years, right? They they don't know what they don't know. And, you know, if you show them three, four houses, Hey, which one of these three, four houses did you like the most? This is the one that we're going to make an offer. I'll put together a great offer plan and, and work on getting accepted. I mean, and then that's okay. That sounds great. Yeah. That's, I've, that's amazing. Yeah. It's a, what, what's really amazing to me is how you were able to come in and in an industry where 87% of the real estate agents fail in the first three years, you did 40 transactions. Yeah. 
And you did that, it sounds like a lot off of Zillow. A lot off of Zillow. But you had to, like like you said, it, it sounds like, was it, was it you're, you're obviously good on the phone. You're good at talking to people. You're not afraid to call them. Right. And then you follow up. You follow up. It's a, yeah. I mean, I love being on the phone. I mean, that's where I, I mean, I like talking to people. I like getting to know people. I like to, I, I negotiate a lot of my deals verbally before I even, you know, submit a purchase agreement. I'll okay. just say, hey, if I send you an over an offer, this, this, and this, I mean, what are the chances you think you can get this done? Can you give me a response back within the end of the day if I write this, write this up and send it to you? I mean, I I mean, I mean, go for the close. I mean, every every time I call, I'll call agents and say, hey, I don't want to waste my client's time. I don't want to waste your client's time. If I bring you an offer of this, can you get it done? Yeah, and, and that also sa it saves time. Yeah, sure. It also is setting expectations. Yeah. So it's a great way. It seems like a great way to set the expectations and let people know, hey, Here's what I'm going to send. Are we okay with this? Yeah, absolutely. Like, you know, just say, hey, no, you know, I think you need to be coming a little bit, a little bit stronger. And that way I know I don't want to, I don't want to write something that I know that's not going to work or offend you. Tell me what I need to do to make it work. I mean, I work the other agent. Hey, my client wants this home. What is it going to take to get this home? You know, let's work together. You know, if I bring you over something like this, no, maybe you tell, if I bring you over that, what you're looking for, can you get it done? Right. It's just you got to close. I mean, that's that's what they're looking yep. for. And per, person selling their home wants top dollar from the home. Person buying a home wants that home, right? And you're trying to find equal medium to make it work. Yeah, yeah. The seller wants the most they can. The buyer wants to buy it, but the little as they can. And somewhere in between is where you tend to meet. It, exactly. Yeah. Right. So. Except for the last couple of years. Sometimes. Yeah. It wasn't last, necessarily yeah. That last one. last couple of years was crazy. You know, I mean, thirty <laughs> offers, and it's like, where do you start? You know, so. So before we come up on the break, Scott, what's the easiest way somebody get a hold of you? Uh, yeah, cell phone. Just uh, text me, call me. I'll answer my phone regardless, no matter what time of the night. Call me at 765-618-4957. And if you're calling him while he's on this podcast, he'll call you right as soon as he's done. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, Rick, how would they get a hold of Rick, you or I? Uh, they go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. And you can contact Ian or I from there, or you can call 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. And after the break, we'll find out what is Scott's superpower. Thanks for listening to Indy's Real Estate Gurus. The guru gurus we interview share valuable insights. They reveal their strengths, personalities, and how they'll work for you. Well, we hardworking mortgage guys secure your best mortgage. Real estate gurus work hard, too. They avoid problems that amateurs don't see. They listen. They find unrealized opportunities. If you're buying or selling a home, a real estate guru is a valuable asset. If you're th even thinking of buying or selling a home, keep listening and definitely call one of Indy's real estate gurus. All right. Hey, welcome back from the break. Uh, Scott is still with us, so I, I'm glad that Rick didn't have to tackle him like he did the last person. <laughs> All right, but so before we get into what is his superpower, let's get into the question of the week. The question of the week is sponsored by, hey, Rick and I, the hardworking mortgage guys, uh, where we believe in helping and supporting you and your realtor by sending constant updates on your loan process. Contact us today at hardworkingmortgageguys.com. So, Scott, what was your first car? My first car was a 96 red Mustang. That's nice. Yeah, right? So it was my first one, and... Fortunately, I totaled it. So, <laughs> and it was, so and it's not I, nice anymore. No, not nice. And I think my parents went. I ended up with a Corsica after that. So, <laughs> so you had a Mustang. Yep. And what motor did it have in it? It was just a V six. Okay. I mean, motor. It that's not three much of a car. I mean, size wise, weight wise, it's not very heavy. Or yeah, it's not very heavy. Good. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's V six. I mean, it, I mean, it was still you know fast car for being in high school. So yeah. Yeah. yeah, my kids didn't end up with, they ended up with a little four-cylinder in their cars because I knew how I was in high yep. school. They weren't getting anything with a motor in that, it. Yeah, that's probably why <laughs> I ended up with a Corsica. Girls went from, hey, Mustang. Yeah. Oh, no, Corsica. Uh, yeah, yeah. The, guy was, the guy was on the football team. What happened, man? <laughs> so. Well, you have kids now, so you'll, you kind of understand why your parents might have wanted you. Yes, for sure. Absolutely, car, right? yeah. yeah. So they'll get a Mustang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, you know, you don't know, but how, what's your? What, how old is your oldest? Uh, I have one. She's nine. She's nine. She'll be nine months tomorrow. Nine so. months tomorrow. Yeah. So, so he's got a little ways. There may be automatic automatic driving cars by the time. They're oh. Yeah, I know. So I'm right. hoping. 
I want one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what a time saver. Yeah, for sure. I, I mean, uh, think, about, think about all the offers you can write while the car's driving you to the next home. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I can sit there, open up my laptop, and <laughs> the next thing I look up, I'm sitting in front of a driveway ready to go to my next showing. Yeah. <laughs> when that happens, it'll be a beautiful thing. Yeah. It'll be so, another game changer for oh, yeah. everybody, I think. So it'll I, probably be some Elon Musk puts together. So. <laughs> Well, I hear there's I hear that they're theirs are really good. Yeah, no. Yeah, they they he does a pretty good job. I'm so Yeah. I mean as far as their self driving piece. Yeah, I mean the autopilot thing yeah. I think they have set up. I mean, I drove a couple of those cars. I mean, it's it's crazy what it can can and can't do. So Yeah. It feels so weird. Yeah. So they like, do, yeah. Like you, I came from uh, as Rick mentioned earlier, I I came from the auto industry and we used to do the high end cars yep. and I got in a Tesla P 85 D and I hit the gas and you don't realize it's all torque. Yes. Yep. It just keeps going. Yeah. There is no yep. going back. There's no stutter. It just goes. Yeah. It's well, there's it's, it's, it, I, 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 we, we, in the car business, we were like, this is the most powerful golf car you're going to buy. Yep. So. Yeah. <laughs> But the but I think one of the big differences is is the the power is already there. Yeah. So a, a, a gasoline motor has to make it has the to, horsepower. Yep. The electric is is just waiting for it to wait for you to step electric. on yeah. it. Yeah. That's yeah. all it's doing. And I know they're incredibly fast. I watched a video where I don't remember what model it is, but it's the it's the four door station wagon yep. kind of van looking thing. Yep. And it outran a Lamborghini right. <laughs> over like an eighth of a mile. Yeah, I so I have a I have a Z06 Corvette, you know, I mean one of the newer ones, and it's crazy. I mean, that I'll see a Tesla just blow right by me, right at the you know the line. I'm like, geez, I'm like, what what am I doing here? So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you are not racing people. Yeah, exactly. You know, what I mean, I follow the law. I mean, so try the speed limit. So especially here in Carmel, right? <laughs> so do you have one of the mid engine cars? Uh, I don't. I have the C7 with the okay. front, the one of the last front. That's engines, my. So. That's actually my favorite. I I I like a front engine look. Yeah. So my I love Corvettes, and that's that's I like that. I'm probably going to buy a, a 2019 at uh, some point. Yeah. I don't know about a Z06 because now, now that I've gotten older, I mean they have 700 and something horsepower. Yeah, my so mine's 650, you know, horse oh. and 650. <laughs> I, when I first bought that car, you don't realize what. You know, you've driven. You don't want to realize what true power is, and and you know, until you're doing 50 miles an hour, and step on the gas, and it can fishtail at 50 miles right. an hour, right? And right. that's 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 supercar fast, and uh, and that I mean, it took me back a few times and a minute to get used to it. So yeah, yeah, you don't, you probably don't do that anymore. Yeah, I don't do that anymore. <laughs> so I mean, you know, I've driven cars where you know you peel out right when they go, but when you're doing 50, 60, I mean. You get on the gas, it'll fishtail that. It's, so it's kind of scary. Yeah. And that has wide tires. And yeah. This is phenomenal. But back to real estate, what would you say your superpower or superpowers are? Uh, my superpowers are is, I mean, obviously come from sales. I love the negotiating piece and uh, closing. There, there's an art to the deal. You know what I mean? I like to figure out the art to the deal. And then uh, obviously when it comes to listing homes, I have a excellent marketing strategy that I do. I think my average list time on homes, I, I, I sell a home within seven days as soon as I put it on the market is what my average is. Uh, but between those, I mean, that's what I, you know, love to do is between the negotiating and and getting a home ready to sell for, for the clients. So what do you think you do differently to get it marketed? Uh, just how I go about it. I mean, uh, photos, drones, I do videos. I do, uh, even I paid for social media advertising ads, uh, for retargeting. Uh, I know there's a lot of people that don't do that where you're sitting at home and you're looking at homes, uh, you know, throughout the day, you're laying in bed at eight, nine o'clock at night. I the home you're looking for keeps popping up on your social media, whatever you use, you know, Facebook, Google, it just keeps popping up and, and I get a lot of views. I can measure the clicks and how many people are looking at it. And I get I get a lot of traction and a lot of showings. I've actually closed a few uh, me and me deals. I mean that way, just the way I advertise it. And you know, you need as many eyes as you can on a home. I mean, just putting a sign in the yard and throwing it on the MLS. You know, today's market, you got to do a little bit more than that. I mean, to get somebody top dollar for their home. Show them that you're, you know, valued into their home and valued into them and what you want to do to get them top dollar. And that's that's how I go into it. And that's what separates me from the rest. 
And you know, it's it's vitally important that people understand that the the job of the of the agent who lists the home is to market that home. Absolutely. Right. Not necessarily personally sell the home. That's great if they yeah. do, but their their job really is to market it. And that's that's why that is so very important. Because you're one person, but how many real estate agents are out there if you're marketing it correctly that could then bring it bring somebody to to you, right? Absolutely. To the house and sell the house. So that's that to me is the critical piece. And I, I know coming from new home sales, after car sales, I was in new home sales. And that's what I noticed is that you know, certain agents were really good at that. And, and it's, it, it's kind of like, well, I'm not much of a sports fan, but I watch a basketball game and I don't, I, you know, it's like you, you don't normally see the difference between these top players, but then once in a while, you know, that one guy I mean, it, with all the pros out there, they're playing against, they stand out. Yeah. Right. And you can see the difference. And that's the same way with real estate. Absolutely. And it matters that you're able to market that house. That's, yeah vitally important you'd be surprised how many you know i mean and it, and it blows my mind you know i get on the mls and see how many expired listings that there are i mean it just it blows my mind like you know and i'll reach out to those people like you and then let them know your home should have sold i'll call them your home should have sold my marketing plan i will get your home sold for you and i'll get you the most money for it here's here's the reasons why to use me and i mean i i will go after them and i mean if they're expired yeah i mean that's that's a way to get into, you know, some business, go out there, does expired listings. But, you know, they're upset their home didn't sold. Why did my home go expired? Why did it, you know, what what did my home, what did somebody not like about my home that they liked about others? Like, you need to market it. It needs to see as many eyes as you can, not just the people in the area. You need to, people that's located out of state, you know, they may be moving to Indiana that they're not seeing this home. What, what How are you market touching those people? Those are things that I do is I, I have a big reach. Yeah, that's vitally important. Absolutely. Yeah, that that's very important. So when you're, um, if somebody was looking to hire a real estate agent to list their house, let's say, what characteristics and traits should they look for? In an in an agent. In an agent. Uh, just um, one professionalism. Communication is the big one. Is let let them let them know that you're going to follow up with them and let them know what's going on with the sale of their home and and that. Information is key. I mean, you know, I mean, any information that you can give them, any kind of showings that you have, give them the feedback and let them know what people are saying about them home. That way it's not coming from you. It's coming from people that's actually showing them home. I mean, I see some agents that don't even bother calling the, calling the list people and let them know, hey, what, I know we had three showings the other day. What what was people's feedback on it? Like, let, the, let them know. I mean, it's their home. They deserve to know. And it's just communication is the big thing. I mean, that's what people want. They want to know what's going on with their home. And and all in all, I mean, they they want top dollar for their home. They want to make sure they get the right person. Yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine, and he's a real estate agent. And he was saying that if you don't communicate, he was in training. They said, if you don't communicate something to somebody, even if everything's perfect, they, everything in their minds, they run down, everything's falling apart, you know? Yeah. So you have to communicate have to them, to be, it, even if it's everything's fine, right? Yep. Everything's fine. Like I said, I mean, pick up the phone and call, you know, your clients. I mean, pick up the phone, call other agents, pick up the phone and call, you know, potential business. It's a phone business. Use your phone. You know, you never know when there's next opportunity onto yeah. there. Now, a lot of people are switching to text or, or using I text. Mean, text. I shouldn't too, say yeah. switching it, right. but using text. But I think you're... I think you're you're more like me. You like the call. Yeah, I I like the call. You can actually you know gauge engage with somebody versus you know uh, calling versus if you text somebody you may get that one worded text and like where do you go from there, right? You know maybe I said something that you know that they didn't want to hear. That way you can you can kind of gauge somebody's emotions over the phone and right and you know, a phone call is more meaningful to me you know to them too. Yeah. This guy picked up you know took. 10 minutes out of his day to call me to let me know what's going on versus saying, Hey, he's sitting in a meeting and he sent me a quick text message. Hey, we had a couple of showings. We got a few people that's interested. You know what yeah. I mean? Pick up the phone. And I mean, that's just me. I may be a little old school doing it. I'm 36 years old, but that's the way that I was trained is you just, you pick up the phone and you dial. I right. mean, that's. And yeah. And like you said, the, 
texting is okay. Yeah. There are certain times where it works, but let's be honest. We've all been in a relationship. You get a certain text message. You re- you read it the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> How often does that happen? And then it, it happens the same way in business. So sometimes, yeah, the phone is the easier way to communicate. Absolutely. Uh, but yeah, if you're sitting in a meeting or something, sometimes, hey, I'll text you or I'll call you here in a second or something like that. It's it's a little easier. Yeah. But. Hey, give me five minutes. I'm going to be done. I'll call you right back. Right. You know, that's that's what I think the power of text messages are. Hey, I saw that you call. Like, I just, I had a client called me, you know, a little bit ago saying, hey, I'll call you in about an hour. I'm getting ready to wrap up, uh, you know, a meeting with some guys. Uh, and, okay. You right. know what I mean? So, get, set that expectation and, then, and let them know. And, yeah. I mean, that's that's the key to this business is setting expectations and communicating it. Right? Yeah. So. Well, and I don't know how you can I'll relate, it, I'll relate it to the car business. It's kind of like not, texting is to me is kind of like not going on the demo ride. Yeah. Okay. You go on a demo ride and there's a rattle in the back of the car, right? And the 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 person thinks I'm not buying this car. There's a rattle in it. If you're with them, you can go open the trunk and show them that's just some screws that are in the back of the trunk to put the license plate on, right? right. Yep. You know, but if you're not there, they just get out. They tend not to tell you that there's something wrong. They just say, I don't like this car. You know, there's a rattle in it, whatever. Yeah. So it, 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 you, it's a great to, the text is great to, like you said, that, that way, but it's really difficult to, to walk somebody through the process on a text Yeah, and make sure they have all the communication. Absolutely. Yeah. So, I mean, that's, te- the texting is good in certain instances of, you know, business or, or even life, but I mean, it's. You know, pay, my my mom calls me this day. They're like, I'll text her. Well, why don't you call me? You know what I mean? So, <laughs> I mean, it's like, because uh, you're right. I need to call you a little more. So, sorry, mom. So. <laughs> so, Scott, if somebody does want to call you, how would they call you? Call me on my cell phone. I mean, 765-618-4957. Call me. I'm available 24-7. I'll pick up my phone in the middle of the night. I'll, I'll walk out of dinner and take a phone call. I mean, that's just the type of person I am. All right. And Rick, how would they get a hold of you and I? I would go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com. You can uh, contact the NRI from there, or you can call 317-672-1938. That's 317-672-1938. And this is the end of the radio show. So if you are wanting to listen to podcasts, go to Indies Real Estate Gurus, and we'll listen to you there. Thank you for tuning in. Hey, this is the podcast side. So if you're already on the podcast, yeah, you, you're, you're still here. So congratulations. If you're continuing from the radio, you chose the right chapter. So, Scott, I do like to ask one good question for you. Sure. What do you think is your most memorable deal? My most memorable deal is... Uh... I stumped him. Yeah, you did. Uh, <laughs> I have... I have there's, I have, there's two... Uh... Uh, my most recent one is is a uh, is a lady that reached out to me. Uh, she she found me on Zillow, and uh, just you know recently went through a divorce uh, and has two twin boys, and she they they uh, go to a certain school because their kids need to attend that school for uh, certain reasons, and uh, there's a certain area that she wanted to be in and. Uh, and she says, I got to have this home and I can only be in this area in this school district. And, and, and it's a, it is over there in Avon. And there was a house that came up for sale. And she, she basically told me, she says, I want this house. Please do whatever you can to, to get me this home uh, and, and get me out of the situation that I'm in. And so there was a home that was for sale. It was listed with a, um, uh, with a carpenter agent. I called her and I just said, Hey, I know, I know you got a lot of action on this home. I got a lady that really wants it. She's, you know, she can do anything that you need her to do. Well, I called her and it was another young lady that was selling the home. And, you know, and they say, you know, not to do stories, but I mean, I kind of, you know, did a story and gave, you know, just saying, Hey, she, you know, I didn't get too deep, but Hey, it's a single mom of two kids and looking to, to get back on her own. And well, at the end of the day, we ended up putting a deal together. You know, we worked through it together. Um, and to me, that was our uh, most memorable memorable deal is just helping somebody like that and giving back to. Uh, uh, I think I even gave up a percent of my commission just to just to you know help her to put the deal together. So, but it it, it was something like that. It was special to me to to help somebody like that. So. Um, and then my second one is, is I had another guy out in Canby 
was in a wheelchair. Uh, he was in um, in the military and just living off of military income. And then you know he was on a he had a three bedroom two bath ranch on two acres, and he just couldn't take care of himself right. anymore. And I had my contractor guys. I mean, he just had stuff everywhere. I had my contractors guys go out there, get the house ready to go for him. I mean, I paid for it at my expense and got his house ready. And I sold it for, you know, 15 grand over list and found him the perfect, you know, 55 year old community to, to live in and live out his days in there. So yeah, those are always the most memorable when you yeah. really affect all, all home sales affect somebody's life. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. But those are, even more special. Yeah, absolutely. Those, yeah. those, you know, go a long way. And, you know, when somebody, you know, wants to do the right thing and you can tell they're naturally a genuine person, you, you want to help those people, right. you know, a little bit more. And, and and I have the tools to do so, and you know, and I use them to, to get it done for them. How would you describe your brand? My, well, uh, my, my brand is, I mean, I try to come off as, a, you know, a resilient, aggressive, uh, type agent. I mean, you know, if I, if I plan to write an offer, I plan to write it to win. I don't write an offer to lose. I, my mentality is if we're going to do this, we're going to do it to win. I don't, I don't fail that. That's how I go about it. And, and if we're going to do it, we're going to do it this way. And you know what I mean? And you'll be surprised what the outcome is. Yeah. That's awesome. Because I, you know, it's, it's a, that's that's obviously if somebody wants to write an offer, that's what they want. They want to win. They want to win. Yeah. Right. I mean, you you want to win. I mean, I'm not wasting your time. I'm not wasting their time. If we're going to write this offer, we're going to write it to win and put us in the best chance to win. And I'm going to see what it takes to win. And right. I'm going to find out all those details and I'll call and see if there's multiple offers and what does it take to win? That, what is it going to take to win? Yeah. And see, that call makes a difference. That, that I think that's a big deal. Uh, what I notice is, and this is not on you, you know, you calling a, a real, another agent, the, the listing agent, but the listing agent side many times doesn't call the lender. I got a call the other day calling, calling me as the lender wanting to know. Yeah. And that to me makes perfect sense. I like to call the, the listing agent before the offer goes in and just say, Hey, listen, I just pre-qualified this person. They're looking at your house and they're perfectly qualified. They're phenomenal. Just know it's a good offer. I don't have many people who let me do that, yeah. but I think that's a, especially like for you, if, if you do that I, I, and then you call, I mean, I just, that kind of communication to me just works. Yeah. So that's, that's the way I see it. I mean, you'd, you'd be surprised. I've listed homes and, and I'll get offers and I don't even get a, I don't even get a phone call or I just have an offer in my inbox and, and I'm just pick up the phone and call me and say, Hey, my people love the home. You know, we're going to send you an offer. You know, hope this works for your seller. If it doesn't, please let me know what it takes to to win. And so the ones that call me are the ones you're going to remember. If you send in an email to an agent, it's just going to go, right. they're going to overlook it. I mean, that's another key. Pick up the phone and say, hey, I got an offer for you. My clients are excited to put an offer in. Let me know if it works for you. Yeah, but you know, and, and beyond that, I think it makes a difference because you kind of get, you get to know that agent, right? Yeah. And whether you can work with that agent. And that is, that's a piece, whether it's a actual part of the written contract, it is a piece of the contract. Yeah. If you talk to somebody or you've worked with somebody and you, and you go to your buyer, your sellers or, and you say, listen, this person last time they asked for the moon once the, yeah. and, you know, this is a difficult one. These two offers are, are basically identical. If it were, I mean, I can, I would do that because yeah. I think you need to communicate those things. And if you talk to somebody, even if you haven't worked with them, you can get a feel for what they're like and who they are. And you know enough people, you can probably find out. Yeah, absolutely. Relationships is key in this business and, and you know, talking, working a deal. And and you never know, you know, next time I, ha you know, you have a home, hey, I did a deal with that person. It was a super smooth transaction, you know, I mean, you can take that to your seller. Like, hey, his, his pre-approvals are good. He gets it to the closing table. He's good to work with. I mean, those go a long way. Realtors yeah. look at that. Right? Yeah, they should. Yeah, they should. So with you doing, you did 40 homes and everything. So yeah. have you had to develop a team to work with? To, because that seems like a lot of work for one person. It, it was a lot of work. And, <laughs> and uh, no, I don't, no team. Uh, I have a great, you know, staff at my Tucker office on the West side. Uh, great admin. You know, the girls will, you know, help me out when, when I need it. But no team. I keep going back and forth uh, with the team because uh, I mean I like to be involved. Uh, I actually I actually won a listing the other other day. Is uh, 
they told me we're interviewing other agents and I let them know and just saying, Hey, that, you know, that's a great agent. They have a team, but I said the difference between we with an individual and person with a team, you get me 24 hours, seven days a week. My phone's always on it's that if you're calling them, you may get somebody on their team and they may not know what's something that's going on. You get me. I mean, I, I'm going to be through it all the way. And I ended up winning a listing that way because I mean, they call me and they know they get me, but but uh, I think Rick and I talked about this, but if I was to start a team and it's not out the question, I'd get a group of uh, successful car guys that sell 20, 30 cars a month and I would build my team around them. They have a sales process. They know what it takes. And, and that's where I would start my, my team. I would, I would uh, recruit some car guys. Yeah. And you know how to teach them because the hard part for a car person, it, it, like when I came, I came out of car sales into new home sales and into, into mortgages. The hard part of moving into mortgages is the the people don't just walk under your lot. They don't just walk into your new home for sale. Yeah. So you have to learn how to market. So you get a car salesperson knows how to sell, and then you bring them clients and you show them how to market. I mean that that's that's like the perfect setup. Absolutely. They're used to working. They work those long hours. They they have a CRM where they're in front of with daily tasks. They're used to making the phone calls, the text messages, and the emails. They know the questions they ask. They know they. I mean, they know the road to the sell, and then you can tweak those skills over time, and that molds into a great, you know, I mean, salesperson or real estate agent yeah. or or anything, you know, is sales related. I mean, so, and that's just one of the downfalls I just see in real estate, and it just, you know, I mean, it kills me because there's agents that get their license that just has no sales experience, and and which is fine, but we need to we need something to train them to. Here's the steps, you know, meet and greet. You know, we've done everything from body posture, how to hold your hand out, look them in the eyes and say, hey, my name's Scott Hermeyer and your name is <laughs> what? I mean, all, all the way, yeah. you know, I mean, through the steps. I mean, they just, they don't, they don't teach that. And, and I, you know, unfortunately, I think that's why a lot of uh, real estate agents get burned out because they don't know. I mean, they don't, they're not properly trained. Right. Yeah, because the the license doesn't train that. No, exactly. It gives you a piece of paper that you can hang on a wall. I mean, and sell real. You know the legal. Yeah, the legal legal side. You know what I mean. But as far as sales, I mean, there's just you you need you need sales training. I mean, I mean Grant Cardone. I mean that was that was a person that I I studied his stuff and you know and I kind of he's that aggressive, resilient you know salesperson and and close big deals and I kind of try to mold my you know persona around around that because I mean it works. I mean, right. People want to know what it takes. Right. Do you have what it takes? And don't tell me what I want to hear. I want to see results. And that's how I, I build my business. Right. You, you do all that, but you also care. I care. And you communicate. Yes. And that's, I think that's one thing I just, I'd like, I'd like to at least get out there because coming out of the car business, sometimes we don't have the best, you know, people that look at car yeah. sales people, but it's the reality is it's just like in real estate and just like in mortgages, the vast majority of people in the business care about others and they really, they, they do a lot to help others. And yes, they want the sale, but they don't want the sale at somebody's, you know, expense. They want to they want them to get the right house and be happy because we all know the only way, the only way to success and to continue to be successful is to take care of the customer. Absolutely. And do what they need. Take care of you take care of your customers, you follow up with them, you uh you know, reach out to them on their anniversaries, their birthdays, you know, and they'll they'll know that you've done such a great job for them and that's how you get referrals and repeats and then, you know, after 3 4 years, I mean, it it becomes a, you know, continuous cycle and right. and that's what they ultimately they want to want is they want a, a great agent that communicates and follows up with them and and, and, you know, give them what they don't need. We do this every day. They don't. And if you want that great agent, contact Scott. That's right. 765-618-4957. Well, knowing your personality, I think this is a perfect question for you. Um, I know that you have roadblocks that have gotten in your way. Yes. What is your process to, to, to go around or through or, or, or uh, you know, a level that, that roadblock? Yeah. Uh, that's a great question. Uh, so yeah, I've been thrown and doing 40 transactions. I've been thrown at some stuff that are probably a new agent probably shouldn't have to endure as with, you know, getting attorneys involved and legal. 
I think, you know, doing that and being in the car business, I've had to deal with that side of it. And I just, I know how to, you know, overcome it and, you know, sympathize on what to do where I don't need to, you know, necessarily go to the managing broker and say, Hey, this person signed a contract with open door. And now they're trying to, you know what I mean? Like they're, uh, which that really happened. <laughs> so, uh, and I, I had to get them out of it. It was a big ordeal, but uh, it's just helping them figure, like, navigate how to get out of those situations and not break down as an agent. What do I do? You take it by the horns and you help, you help your client get through it. Yeah. So you just, you just, I figured that was how you did it because yeah. it's very similar to my, my way of doing things is you just, you just do it. Yeah. Right? You just, you just do it and, and we'll figure it out. I mean, we'll figure it out. And yeah. you know, at the end of the day, we'll get to the same end result, you know, but I mean, there's going to be some bumps in the road, but I'll get you there. I mean, we'll get there together and I'll, we'll make phone calls together and we'll get it done for you. Right, which is ultimately what everybody wants. Yeah. What do you think is the most common reason people fail as real estate agents? They, they weren't in the car business first. Yeah, I know, right? So, <laughs> I wasn't uh, asking. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, th I think it's it's just tra I think it's training. There, there's not enough, you know, like you mentioned, sales training. And a, lot, and a lot of the TV that you see, you know what I mean, on HGTV, people are watching that and see the glitz and the glam of selling a home. I'm going to show these five, ten million dollar homes and it looks cool and it's something what I'm going to do, but... I mean, putting in the long hours and I mean, hopping in your car and driving from Avon to Bargersville, you know, to Carmel to, you know, to, to show homes and and get the client. What, what are you going to do to get clients? I mean, how many how many people are you getting in front of? That's the stuff that you don't see and they don't train or even how to show you how to do it that I think, you know, it's it's a lot harder than what I really thought. Maybe this isn't for me is. But I think if somebody, you know, trained them and showed them the expectations on what to do, I think, you know, a lot of more agents could succeed. And, and a new agent, you know, should join a, you know, a team right. with experience. I, you know, don't use me, for example. I was I come from a situation where, you know, I have the background, so I didn't necessarily have a team. I mean, I have a whole team. I have FC Tucker behind me, right? Right, so, right. Uh, you that, 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 that's my team. <laughs> you you, team. Yeah, so, yeah. But I mean, being a new agent and you want to say, Hey, I want to sell homes, get, get with a good team with a team leader that knows what they're doing and let them help train you and, and just follow their steps. And, you know, and they can make you a great agent. I mean, I know some great team leaders out there that just do a phenomenal job and I'll even pick up the phone and call a few of them. If they're, I'm stumped on something. Yeah. So. yeah. I mean, that's a great thing about working. I mean, yeah. especially with you with Tucker is like you said, even when you're, you started out, yeah, you were doing very much, but yeah. You probably had question after question, and when you have a team like Tucker, you can call any one of them. And be oh, like, oh, yeah. this is what you do. Yeah. This is how you overcome that. That is phenomenal. Absolutely. I mean, there's several agents that I'll pick up the phone and call, saying, "Hey, what would you do in this scenario? Hey, what 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 does this document mean? Or hey, what is a you know escalation clause? Or how much should I? You know, I mean, there's things that you know I'm trying to do that I'm I'm making phone calls that I don't know and and. You, you need those people to help yeah. you to get through it. So yeah, you need, you need mentors. You do. It's critical. It's critical in this business. You need a mentor. Luckily I have a guy that came from the, the car business that, you know, he's, the, he's the number one individual Tucker agent, you know, but I call him and, and, you know, he'll let me know, just say, Hey, this is what you need to do. And, or even I'll call my managing broker. I mean, every once in a while, I'm just saying, Hey, what, what, what would you do in this situation? And they, they kind of guide me and, I kind of piece it together and make it my own. So yeah, and I find that it's it's not only the bro the managing brokers and those. A lot of times it's it, a lot of people. It seems it's the it's the other real estate agents you work with. They they might come to you because you're really good at marketing. Yeah, or you're really good at negotiating, and they may have a situation where they come and say, "Hey, listen." So you're mentoring them at that point, but then you they may turn into your mentor for something that they do. That yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was uh, I mean, I had one and. When I first started, I said, uh, "I said, what do what do you do to get get so many listings?" I mean, he, I mean, I said, "What, what how do you get listings?" I get a lot of buyers, which is normal in a in being a new agent. Ninety percent of yours going to be buyers, and ten percent are going to be listing. But I said, "What, what do you do differently to get?" I mean, he told me what he does. I mean, the homes that he sells in a neighborhood, he sends out just sold postcards and and just keeps you know staying in front of them, stay relevant, and 
to tell me things that he does. And, you know, and I've kind of implemented, uh, you know, doing that as well after I sell home. I sell postcards in the neighborhood and, and there's things that you don't know unless you don't ask those questions. Like I, I wouldn't have known to, to do that. I mean, right. So, I mean, there's just little things there and, you know, you kind of pick them when they're there and you kind of piece them and you make them your own. Yeah. So what are you looking for towards the future, like uh, for in the next couple of years for yourself or even the indie market? Uh, my uh, So my goal uh, myself is, I mean, I, I had my, my first couple of years. My first year was to be rookie of the year. My second year was to be the number one agent in my office. And my third year was to be the number one individual agent in Tucker. So once I feel like I've depleted those three years, I've, I'm considering maybe starting a team and getting some agents uh, underneath me and try to and try to tackle that as my next challenge. Uh, yeah, it, it's an important situation. You know, it's it's a, it, because that's a big change when you go from you, you do you hit those three, which gives you the yep. background that you need. Yep. But then when you start to manage salespeople, independent contractors. Yep. That's a that's a whole nother. Yeah, that's wax, a whole, you know, it? I mean, and, and coming from the car business, I mean, I spent many years managing salespeople, and, right. you know, so I, I and I kind of wanted to get away from it a little bit and kind of be my own independent and do my thing. Uh, but I've noticed, I mean, to, to be a true big hitter in this business is you need a successful team. I mean, the, I mean, the Biff Wards, the Matt McLaughlin's, the Kerry Hollies, I mean, do each do $100 million in business? They, they do it with a strong team. Right. I mean, and that's. And over time, they've developed that and uh, got some killer agents on their team and yeah. do very well. Yeah. Well, I, I think it is critical to get there because you only have so much time. No matter yeah. it, you you and and you can't work twenty four hours a day, seven days a week, forever. No, you absolutely. Just can't do it. I, I mean, I, cl- I, I like hey it. Scott can even yeah. a nine month old. He yeah. can do it. I mean, the, last September <laughs> I had twelve. I had twelve closings. I mean, and that was tough. I mean, oh, I was yeah. going to bed at midnight every night. My wife's like, I mean, that's 12 closing. It's 12 different personalities. That's 12 different inspections. It's 12 different responses, 12 different lenders. That I mean, and you're navigating. I mean, that that's that's that was tough. I mean, yeah. that was probably, it was my most rewarding month, but it was a very challenging because you're trying to remember what's going on with every yeah. single one of those and stay out in front of it. I mean, it was, that was, it was, that was a crazy month. But well, we are running out of time. So if somebody wants to get a hold of you, they have any real estate needs, what is the best number, Scott? Yeah, please call me at 765-618-4957. I'm always available for your real estate needs. And to get a hold of Ian or I, go to hardworkingmortgageguys.com. That's hardworkingmortgageguys.com or 317-672-1938. 317-672-1938. And please follow us so you don't miss a show. And just a reminder, if you know any friends, family, or coworkers looking to buy, sell, or refinance, contact Rick or I, and we'll be more than happy to help them. Thanks so much for joining us.